All right, everybody, welcome back. And in this step, we're going to be taking a look at the metrics that we use to measure whether the top of funnel is doing its job, which is to raise awareness, right, for your solutions. It might be raising awareness that there is indeed a problem uh, with the prospect or, or the potential customer. So again, let's take a look back here at our at our uh, content lifecycle graphic here at the top of the funnel. Now we're in the upper right hand corner where we're looking at metrics. So these metrics include offer awareness, right? So how, how many people are becoming aware of our offers? Retargeting list growth, right? We want to see our retargeting lists growing. Uh, site engagement rates, all right? Number of inbound links and traffic by channel. All right, so let's take a look at each one of these. So again, we talked about this a little bit earlier where when people are becoming offer aware, all right, so you're, you're getting the message out about your offer, you're going to see more people. So one of the ways to measure this is you're going to see more people going to google.com, bing.com, yahoo.com, and typing in the exact name of your product or service. This is called branded search, all right? So how can you measure that? Well, you can go into something called Google Webmaster Tools, which is really easy to get set up on your website. And basically what Webmaster Tools does is it allows you to see what Google sees on your site. Okay, and in this case, you can see that in the Webmaster Tools search queries report, see that along the left there, that um, you, you know, in, in, our, in our case, you're seeing an increased amount of impressions and clicks on the term DM Lab. All right, now DM Lab is one of our products, and as we continue to get the awareness out there about it, we will see an increase in impressions and clicks on the name of that product. Now, again, just below that, you see Digital Marketer Lab, which is another way to say the same product. So you should be, you know, whether you're selling a, a a golf club or you're selling a particular packaged service that has a name to it, you're going to see an increased amount of branded search when you're getting the, the word out. You can see that in Webmaster Tools. All right, so it, this really applies to any branding or advertising campaign. If you're running billboards on the side of the highway or television spots or radio spots, or you're just doing content marketing and social media marketing correctly, you're going to see that um, the, the number of people searching for your brands is going to go up. All right, now direct traffic should also increase when advertising. Now what is direct traffic? Direct traffic is when somebody goes to their browser and literally types in the name of your uh, URL, so digitalmarketer.com, they hit enter and they go direct to your site. They didn't come from Twitter, they didn't come from search, uh, they just came direct to your site. And this makes sense, right? When you are advertising or doing awareness campaigns and, and your top of funnel is working correctly, you will see an increase in the amount of people that come direct to your site. You're gonna see people that come from your branding campaign and they say, oh yeah, you know, uh, Digital marketer does this, I'm gonna go to that site. All right, so they didn't come from anywhere, they just came direct to your site. This type of traffic increases when advertising. So if you go out and spend um, thousands and thousands of dollars on television ads, you should see your direct traffic go up as, as you continue to get on people's television screens and mention your brand and your website, you're gonna see direct traffic increase. And the same thing happens when you're running a solid social media and content marketing campaign. Now, let's talk about this important concept called retargeting, all right? So at the top of the funnel, we use retargeting in a very specific way, and that is to segment people and to build lists of people that we know are interested in one thing or another that we offer. All right, so let's take a look at this slide here. At the top of the slide, you have the traffic source. And it really doesn't matter whether it's social media or SEO or paid traffic or email that, you know, it, it, in any of the other ways that you can get traffic to a website. It doesn't matter if it's it, what type of, uh, what source of the traffic is. What's, what's important is that when they get there, they are segmented, all right? They are 
raising their hand and saying, I am X or I am Y. So in this example that we've created here, you have uh, those that visit the, the, the track on the left raising their hand and saying, hey, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. All right, they are visiting a page that has a vegetarian recipe on it. They are as much as telling you, hey, I'm a vegetarian, or I'm at least thinking about becoming one. All right, in the middle here, we have a set of pages that have gluten-free recipes on them. So people visiting this page from search or paid or email or however they get there are telling you, hey, I am interested in gluten-free recipes, I am gluten-free, you know, or I'm at least interested in it, remember. And the last one is that people that um, visit pages about vegan recipes are as much as raising their hand and telling you, I'm a vegan, or I'm at least thinking of being vegan. Now, the important thing to understand here is that with retargeting technology, that we are able to to advertise and follow the people around the web with the proper advertisement based on what we know about them by the content that they visit. So if your content strategy should allow you to segment people based off of, in this case, these are my vegetarians, these are my gluten-free folks, these are my vegan folks and I'm going to send them the right offer. All right. So I create a custom audience or a retargeted audience around vegetarian, gluten-free and vegan. And then I send them the right offer, right? I retarget them with the right offer. So for the vegans, I send them the, this book offer. And in this case, I send them the gluten-free book. And in this case, I send them the vegetarian book, right? So you, you, make them the correct offer based off of what content they have previously visited. This is a very powerful concept that I'm going to spend just a little more time on. So let's take a look at how this might work where we've got along the left side here, we've got some Facebook ads, uh, Google AdWords, YouTube ads, email marketing, organic social media. It doesn't matter where the traffic comes from, but in this case, the person has visited a page about how we grew a blog from zero to six million dollars, right? So if somebody visited, visits this page, they are as much as telling me, hey, I'm interested in starting a blog or I'm interested in growing my blog. And what we do here is we drop a cookie on their machine or some people call it a pixel, right? And um, but more people are more familiar with the word cookie. So we'll use the, the word cookie, but it's actually a pixel um, that is dropped on their machine. And what that pixel does is it tells Facebook or any other uh, platform that allows retargeting that, hey, this person has been on this page and that, hey, we should show them this ad. All right. So really powerful stuff. I know you're interested in this. And I also know you're interested that you're, that you're aware of my brand now because you've been on my blog, you've consumed at least one piece of my content. I know you know about me and I know you're interested in blogging. This is a very hot prospect to retarget to this particular offer. So in this case, we said, Hey, do you have writer's block? This is in the bottom right hand corner. Boost your content with these 212 blog post ideas applicable to any niche, right? And then we say, hey, get, grab your 212 blog post ideas. So this ad gets shown only to people that have visited content about blogging. Now, once they click on our ad, they are then taken to the lead magnet, what we call a lead magnet, which we'll get a lot more into in lesson three. But in this case, it's the ultimate list of blog post ideas. We know that they're interested in our, or that they know about our brand and that they are interested in blogging. And therefore we make them the relevant offer. And when you do this, the conversion rates are very, very high and they bring people and move them through the funnel. So we use retargeting at the top of the funnel to segment and to understand what somebody is interested in because everybody wants to consume content. It's easy to get people to your content, especially if it's good, right? You can get people to content. The problem is how do you migrate them from the content into deeper into the funnel? 
But at the top of the funnel, I just want you to understand before we leave this section that we are interested in segmenting them. As you can see here, we've got a, a, a custom audience here inside Facebook that has visited. You see along the bottom there, I have that uh, red box that says YouTube advertising blog posts. We have 14,500 people that, have, that are in that audience that we can now advertise to because they have visited pieces of content like which YouTube ad is right for you on our blog or how to steal your competitor's audience using YouTube ads that is on our blog. That audience contains right at the time I took that screenshot about 15,000 people that we know are uh, familiar with our brand and are interested in YouTube advertising. So we can retarget them with the right offer. Now, the last thing I want to cover is those, uh, those sort of vanity metrics that I warned you about earlier. You definitely want to, be, want to be measuring these metrics like visits and bounce rate and session length and pages per visit and how many comments are you getting on your post. But don't freak out if you know, your metrics are going a little up or a little down. You should see a gradual uptick in things like uh, uh, visits and a gradual downtick of your bounce rate and more session length and things like that. But remember, these engagement metrics are not necessarily what your client or your employer or you should be caring about as a business owner. These, these are what we would might call vanity metrics that you should see going up over the long haul of a good, well-executed top of funnel content strategy but don't freak out if you're not seeing comments right away or you're not seeing you know, retweets and Facebook likes. You can't take Facebook likes to the bank and cash them. All right, what we're gonna be talking about is how to move people out of this top of funnel content into the middle of the funnel and then down into the bottom of the funnel where you do create things that you can take to the bank. All right, another metric that we wanna be measuring as our content strategy. Now, remember, this is another one that's not going to happen right away, and, and you know you shouldn't, you won't be seeing results on this anytime right after you begin a content strategy. But if you've been running it for you know three months, six months, nine months, a year, and you've been running your content strategy, you should see the amount of people linking to you from other websites increasing. All right, and you can use tools like SEM Rush, Ahrefs or Open Site Explorer to measure that, right? And to find out like how many links do we have now? And, and it's a good measurement to take right at the beginning of a content strategy and then maybe come back three months later and take a measurement. It's a good quarterly measurement of how well is your content strategy working? Are you starting to see people linking to that great content that you're creating at the top of the funnel. And you can use a site, you can see on the right here, I've got Moz's Open Site Explorer. It's a free tool. You can actually pay to get some more features, but it should be fine just to take a quick uh, sort of measurement of how many links you have coming in. Um, and uh, if you want more data, you can obviously uh, get their pro version of this, but you should be able to get away with just using the free version of Open Site Explorer, find out how many links do we have now, okay, let's take this measurement after we run the content strategy for three months and see whether we're, we're starting to pick up some links. Let's do it again. It's six months, nine months, 12 months. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is traffic by channel. All right. You should be seeing your traffic going up from things like, uh, uh, from things like organic search. Uh, referrals should go up as people continue to link to you. <clears throat> you should see direct traffic going up as as people are becoming aware of your brand and your offers and things like that, people typing in direct to your site. Uh, you should see email traffic going up as, we, as you start to execute some of the things that we'll talk about with email marketing and content marketing. So traffic by channel is a good one to be measuring, you know, at least monthly, maybe even weekly, and, and watching those trends and seeing whether you're growing things like email, paid search, direct, organic search, social media, all right, you should see those channels going up over time. All right, in the next step, we're actually going to jump into the worksheets uh, that come along with this training, and we're going to start putting together your tofu content plan. We'll see you there.